So in this video, we're going to cover how to set up PAA with PFSense and also how to do advanced policy routing. And when the policy we're going to specifically be talking about is how to set up a kill switch in here. And the goal is you may want some computers that go out over the VPN. And that's fine. PA has the instruction where you are going to get to this on how to set that up. And it does encapsulate the whole network over there. And then I've also done a more advanced video that I'll link to below on setting it up and doing policy routing. Now this goes policy routing plus a kill switch. So we're going to cover some of the same things in this video. And the kill switch is important because PFSense by default wants to be helpful. And it's the better way to leave the default. And that default is if you are routing things over the VPN and the VPN goes down, it falls back to your ISP. And that same thing can apply if you have a system, maybe you want specifically only to run over the VPN and then the VPN goes down, the system will then fall back to ISP, but that's not what you want. And hence we refer to it as a kill switch, it means it's a policy that says do not route this traffic out anything other than a VPN. So basically you're breaking the helpfulness of PFSense to try to keep the traffic flowing. Now how this works. So we're going to start with private internet access and we've got some of the setup and you may notice that it's all configured here. So we're going to walk through all the steps I did to get here and how to add more uh, to it. But let's start with why did I even choose private internet access? A few people asked me to try to review other VPNs. I've tried several, they work, but uh, private internet access, one of the reasons I came back to them or stuck with them, I should say, since uh, what was 2016, I've been using them for a number of years. They've been very trouble free, very headache free. But as anything, my caveat with VPNs is always, you're just moving the point of trust. So you may want to use a VPN because you don't trust your ISP not to uh, look at your data, or you want to have privacy when you're using public Wi-Fi and you want to encapsulate all the data, but then you have to trust the VPN company. And I don't know any VPN companies personally, so I won't put my absolute trust in them. Please encrypt everything. Um, like I said, you're just kicking the privacy bucket down the road. Just want to get that out there so if someone does leave a comment, VPNs don't secure everything. I agree with you. Uh, but they can be helpful and they can hide your IP address. And one of the things I liked about private internet access, and this is not sponsored by them, but yes, I do have an offer code that does help out the channel. If you want to sign up, you can click the link below. Not required, but hey, I, need, I do appreciate the help of those of you that help support the channel. But private internet access uh, paid for the audit of OpenVPN. And I thought that was really cool. Um, OpenVPN is open source and they paid for to have security researchers validate and vet OpenVPN and look for flaws in it. So they took a really long look at it. Uh, and that does take some time and a few dollars. Uh, those security experts don't come cheap and uh, improved it. And this is just one of those, hey, the company's giving back. And I put them on my radar and I've been using them ever since. And they seem to be a great company. Back to setting it up. So they do have right here, PFSense 2.43 setup guide, uh, last updated on March of 2019. And their setup guide is accurate. Like I said, I followed the guide to get this set up. So I'm not gonna go in depth, but I will go over the settings. So they do have an entire article if you wanna get into some of the minutia of the uh, encryption settings and choose a stronger or lesser encryption. Uh, we're just gonna use the default one they have here, but you can modify this as needed. So you can choose a region off their network page. Uh, you choose a region you want to go into. You download the ca.rsa 2048 uh, and import it. So that instruction works fine. And it's over here. So we're going to go over the CA. And I have it imported. So to import it, it's really simple. Kind of like they show here, you hit import certificate. And you just paste it in here. That's what certificate looks like. Copy, pasta. Give it a name. Another PIA, because I already have one, and it'll let you import two different ones, but you can see it's pretty straightforward to do that part of it. It's just a, it's just a text file certificates, uh, no big deal there. Then we're gonna go over to VPN, open VPN, client. I have two of them set up here. We're gonna get to why in a second. And the why is because, well, because it's cool, I can have one, one computer going out one, one computer going out the other. Uh, another reason is PAA supports multiple connections up to five as of July 2019 with one account. So that's actually kind of cool. So you can do your whole house VPN if you want, um, or selectively policy route only certain computers over there. But as far as the connection goes, you can have PFSense doing connections to different VPNs. So you can have some computers going out one VPN, some computers going out the other VPN, uh, just to make the video a little bit more interesting. Now, 
going down the list here of the setup. So currently client enabled, so this is not disabled. Peer to peer, UDP, uh, layer three. Uh, the Swiss server is one I chose here, but this is where you put whatever server host address. Uh, the port that that server runs on, they have that information in there. Blank, blank, unless you have a proxy, but most people do not. Uh, PAV, peer and switch one, your username, password, put it in and confirm it. Uh, unchecked, unchecked, choose that certificate, whatever you called it. I called mine simply PA, LTS is our internally signed. Client certificate, none username, password, AES 128 GCM here, 128 GCM, AES 256 GCM here, SHA 1160 bit. No hardware acceleration. Blank, 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 blank. Copy pasta from them. Which is, you can see they show it right here, but yeah, just copy paste this. Send receive roughler, IPv4. Do you need more details in the logs for troubleshooting? Hit save and away you go. Now, I'm going to do a favor for you because I ran through that quick because you can go ahead and what I'm going to do is go here. I can go to the backup and restore and I can export OpenVPN. <clears throat> and when I export my OpenVPN, it's not going to do the CA. So you set to do the CA part, but then you can go here and I'll leave a link uh, down in the description below, OpenVPN, and you can then pull my OpenVPN config. And most of the time when people get stuck, it's they missed one little box uh, going through there because it's a lot of details. This is a quick way to do it. I kind of wish they did this, but there is a caveat here. Uh, please back up before you do this, because when you bring in my OpenVPN settings, which is just an XML file. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I This is actually one from earlier when I, uh, from the Chicago one. But when you do this, it will overwrite your OpenVPN settings. So warning, you are restoring with this. So if you've got a blank machine and you're starting, no problem, it'll work. Uh, if you have a config in there and you'll go, oops, I overwrote it. Yeah, you have to modify the XML if you want to add more than one in there. Um, but I'm assuming a lot of people, if you're on the simpler side, just want to pull a file in, I'll leave it below. If not, follow the instructions, they work. Next is two pieces that we're going to do. So once you have the VPN set up and configured, And you can see that it's up, it's working. I don't have to go into any logs, it does work. Uh, and this tells you what the local address is, what the virtual address is for the bridging, uh, the remote host, et cetera. So we know the VPN's up and running. You can go over to ping 1.1.1. And it's always a good idea to check from here and say, hey, can I ping things? Does the data go out at all? And I do this before you start troubleshooting it from the side of uh, the computer, because then you're trying to figure out with the computer why it's not routing, uh, there's more complexity. If it doesn't route here, it certainly won't route at the computer level. So this is like your first test. Uh, this sometimes is solves some problems before you get deeper into it. To get this policy routing working, and this is actually where this stops. The only other thing that's going to have to be done is adding the outbound NAT rules. And we'll cover that in just a second because we're doing them a little bit different is getting the outbound NAT to work is pretty easy. You just go ahead and create these outbound NAT rules. And I'll show you where they're at. I'm going to go from NAT, outbound, and here they are. And you notice it says Swiss, not OpenVPN. That's the special part of the, about how we're going to set this up. And we'll go ahead and duplicate the rule. Like I said, you copy the rules. Uh, you don't really need, unless you're running a ISA KMP type VPN behind here. These are for static NAT ports. They're, in case you're wondering, the 500, they're not as necessary. They do show you copying them in OpenVPN, but if you're not using that type of VPN behind your PFSense, like with a local workstation, they're not relevant. Um, but you just go here, just like they show, you hit the copy rule and you add another rule. And then we're going to go ahead, because I have two different networks. I have LAN 1 and LAN 2. So we're going to go ahead and add this to LAN 2. We just duplicate the WAN rule. Choose Swiss, save. I could add a description if I wanted to to be more accurate, but now it can route out either of these. Now, this is where some people think you do the policy routing, so it only routes out of one or the other, but this is where PFSense defaults. Being helpful, if for some reason the Swiss go down, it just outs the WAN, and 
that's where you want the kill switch added, which we're going to get to shortly. But first, we have to add a gateway. So to allow policy routing out of different gateways as a LAN rule, you need a gateway to route. So what you do is you go here to Interfaces, Assignments, and here's my standard ones. But after you add OpenVPN as a client, it also shows up as a gateway. And here's another one. Here's our Chicago one we added. And all we did was run through that same setting. We added one for the Swiss and one for Chicago. And now we can add a Chicago one. And we've already done the Swiss. So let's walk you through how we add the Chicago. Add. There we go. Not much else. Go here. It's called Op3. Call it Chicago. I like that name. Save. Apply. Now we have WAN, LAN, LAN2, Swiss, and Chicago, but you notice it doesn't have an IP address. The reason it doesn't have an IP address is we have to restart the OpenVPN service. So even though we added an interface, we added the interface, but now the service has to be restarted. So we just hit restart on this. And there is a pause with the interface sometimes when I restart the service. Uh, PFSense keeps routing, but the interface pauses while it's uh, refreshing this. I think it pauses for like 30 seconds if I try to... It just sits here a second, so I'll cut this part of the video out and jump to it working in 40 seconds. So now the system's up and running, and you can see we got PA Switzerland, PI VPN Chicago, and these are the internal routing addresses. Now, short side note, PA has separate uh, routing addresses they use, but if the routing, if this network and this network are in the same as one of your other networks, so this is 10.1.10.1, uh, and it's a slash 24 network, versus this is 10, 13, 10 slash 6. Um, as long as there's no conflict in it, there's no routing issues. But just a side note, if by some unusual uh, chance that you chose exactly the same IP address that they're using, you will then have to choose a different one because PFSense does need to have separate networks for routing. Just a side note in case you run into a weird scenario like that. A lot of internal people are using 192 addresses, which is why they chose to use 10 addresses. But that is a little factor just in case you run into a weird problem because we've seen some of these weird problems where someone chose the same routing as they had in here by coincidence and that was actually what was uh, the troubleshooting problem they had. So now that we've got these two gateways and you can see them here in the routing, we've got our standard WAN set via DHCP, then we got Chicago and Swiss, and we can choose which one's the default gateway. But that's important to have these gateways in here, but that's not where you set the policy routing. You do that under rules. And I created a rule under LAN2. I just created an alias. It says route through VPN Swiss. And we'll show you. So here is the firewall alias called route through VPN Swiss. And this just makes it easy. So if I have to add another host to this, uh, add host and whatever the IP address that host, another host, save now automatically i have two and it just would take that ip and it throws it back in there and now it becomes part of the routing pool so aliases are helpful because if not you have to create individual rules for every single device and that would be tedious back over to the rules now this is the important policy rule you need to create and rules are processed top down so this rule being above this rule is important so this rule is the catch-all that says route it out through dhcp this rule says if you match and you're one of these IP addresses in here, go ahead and route through there. So we're going to edit, edit the rules, show you how we built it. Start with a pass, interface LAN, IPv4, protocol, any. Single host or alias. Like I said, you could create a rule and type each individual IP address right here, uh, but we're just using the alias. And if you're not familiar how aliases work, I think I have a whole video on that, but if you, they autocomplete as you type. Single host or alias, set that. Route these out VPN, Swiss, so we have a name for it. Then normally this is hidden, but we want to display the advanced and leave these blank. But this is the important part. Now, this tag does not autocomplete. This is one I add. I just tagged it VPN traffic. That means this traffic is tagged with VPN. This is find the tag. So this is the adding the tag, and this would be find the tag. Here, we're adding the tag. We're creating another rule to find that tag. Then the gateway. We have the options of Chicago or Swiss or WAN. This is the particular one we want for Swiss. Save. Apply. So now this page right here routes out through the Swiss VPN. So route out VPN Swiss. And because I refreshed the page now, the other one I added on this other tab right here shows both aliases when you mouse over. So you're good there. So this routes out through the Swiss. 
and this one there. Now here comes the kill switch. It's a floating rule. Now floating rules normally are processed after the other rules in PFSense. So we go here to the floating rule, action block, apply immediately. So I said normally after. So this means jump and do this rule before we go to the other rules down the list. We do WAN, any, IPv4, protocol, any, 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 because this is where some people get mixed up and think I can just grab those IPs and apply this rule. You want to do it very specifically like this. So any, any, route, source any, but then here comes how it finds those. This is how that rule knows what to do. We added the tag VPN traffic. Now we exactly, it has to be exactly the same. I added the pull the tag VPN traffic. So now the tag was added. Now the tag is pulled called VPN traffic. And then just go to the bottom, hit save. And what that rule is now doing, if it finds the VPN traffic, and you can see if I mouse over, it says advanced uh, VPN traffic, block it, because that we're blocking going to the WAN. So it's basically looking for anything destination WAN. And you could do the same thing if you had other WAN, WAN 2. Matter of fact, you would need to select if you had two uh, outbounds, you would have to select both of them because you just don't want it going out through the ISP. So when the VPN goes down, so do these hosts. That's the important part about this rule. So we only need the one floating rule. Now let's actually show the rule in action. So here's my, yes, it has a VPN and no VPN. So if I curl IF config country, um, it shows the United States because this is going out through the normal policy route. So it's 192.168.40.119. So this computer is 119. And 118 is when we added the rule for. So if we do uh, curl IF config country, it shows Switzerland. Curl IF config dot co. We'll show IP address. If I did this one, it would show my public IP. This one shows the IP for this Swiss uh, VPN from PIA. Pretty straightforward and simple. What if I wanted to put this one right here behind it? Well, that's really easy. We'll really quickly do it. Firewall, alias, edit. I just know this one's 119. We hit nine, save, apply. Up arrow, now it shows in Switzerland. Go edit the rule again, or add the alias and delete this host, save, apply. United States, rules work perfectly fine. It's doing what we want it to do. Now, here is the problem with the way the VPN works is if we stop the VPN and we're gonna firewall rules and we're gonna disable the floating, so disable it, apply. So we go here and so yes, VPN, just prove once again, it's on there. So country Switzerland, ping 111. Ping in works fine, like, you know, it's on the internet. We go over here and we remember we disabled the floating rule and then we go stop with OpenVPN. We're gonna stop the service. All right, VPN stopped. Hey, look, I can ping. I'm in the United States now because without that floating rule, it's still on the internet and working. So now we go back here, show you the floating rule in action. We turn the floating rule back on, apply. No internet. So it's doing what it, that's the kill switch. VPN went down, this system goes down with it. So let's go ahead and fire the VPN back up. And like I said, this is where it's gonna pause for 40 seconds. So I'm gonna skip ahead 40 seconds in the video. VPN's back up, ping, it works, curl country, back in Switzerland. Everything's back to normal. Kill switch works exactly like it's supposed to, so anytime these go down, away you go, it shuts off. Now, I added two VPNs, like I said, to make video a little bit more interesting, so let's go over here to the rules. Again, we're gonna go over to the LAN where these computers are, and this could be completely done through LAN too, these rules, you know, I'm just doing them in here, but you could do this across every one of the different segments of your network, or whether it's a VLAN or a regular LAN, it doesn't really matter. Um, and let's configure that 119 address, which 118 is an alias, and we can create another alias called Chicago. So I guess we'll do that real quick. So firewall alias. This says route through Swiss. 
let's uh, add an alias route through Windy City. Yeah, there we go. Chicago is known as the Windy City for those who don't know. So then we are going to add that other address in here. 40.119, the other system. Save, apply. So now we're going to go back over to our rules. Land, and uh, we're just going to copy this rule because it works. So copy it. All the things say the same, pass, LAN, IPv4, single host or alias, but we're going to delete and say route. And now we're going to say route through the Windy City of Chicago. Change the description for accuracy. Still that tag VPN traffic is important to have on there. Go down here, choose this gateway as Chicago. So now apply. So one, the rules, once again, top down, if it matches this rule, which 118 does, it goes out to this. When it has this one here, it matches Chicago. And because we also, if you mouse over this, come on, it's adding the tag VPN traffic to both of these. So they both will get caught by the kill switch. But let's say you didn't want this one to be caught by the kill switch. We'll just remove the tag. Then you can go, well, I prefer to go to Chicago, but if the VPN's down, no big deal. I just want to route out. Just remove that tag and then it doesn't have to hit this floating uh, rule. And then you can send things out there. But, you know, maybe you're not worried if you're uh, doing something and it goes out over the standard ISP. But that's it. So now we should be able to test and see Chicago on this one here. So and it failed. Well, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. I kind of did this on purpose and kind of on accident. Um, when we added the Chicago, we added it. I realized I didn't, and this is one well, of those things, go back to the uh, thing I talked at the beginning. We also have to create on this network an ability to go out to Chicago. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, we went to the outbound NAT again, duplicate, choose Chicago, there we go. For each VPN you create, yes, you do have to create a, uh, so we got the 40 network specifically, we got a WAN for the ISP, a Chicago outbound, and a, a Swiss outbound option. So now we can go out any one of those. So now doing that, oh, here we go, working fine. So VPN's up and uh, we'll go ahead and curl ifconfigco. It returns the one, 104, 200, and I believe, let's go back to the front page here. The Chicago address, yep, 104, uh, 200, 153, 91. Same address on both. So it's pulling the Chicago address. Uh, but that's it for the policy routing, and you can kind of expand from here if there's something else you wanted to do. But uh, this way you can put your devices on there. Now, a few side notes about VPN. One, they have a limited amount of protection they provide, they're only pushing the level of trust down the road, meaning you have to trust PIA that they're not doing something with your data. It does though encapsulate it from your ISP. They just see the VPN connection heading over to PIA. Um, but I also don't necessarily recommend putting like gaming servers behind here. So if you want to do VPN, I do recommend some things not go behind there. Now, for example, Netflix occasionally has trouble and some of the streaming services don't like uh, the VPN IP addresses and even some sites straight up block you from being VPN. So being able to quickly uh, move computers around or in between them uh, is easy turning on and off. But that's one of the reasons I frequently run a VPN locally on my computer. Uh, also like at home, if I have the whole home VPN set up, take the gaming servers and don't put them on there. They Anytime you add VPN encapsulation, you're going to add some overhead to it. And that overhead is going to cause some problems. Uh, so you can have potential latency issues and things like that. So pinging things, and matter of fact, uh, Chicago is not far from a knock from us. And there's like a very slight amount of latency added versus going straight through my Comcast ISP going to Chicago. Anytime you add more layers, more pieces of routing, you have more potential for slowdown. So when it comes to gaming, lag is uh, infuriating. So keep the gaming servers off there, encapsulating that traffic, people knowing what games you're play seems like a pretty minimal risk in terms of uh, Comcast going, oh, we see him connecting to uh, XYZ gaming servers. Now we know that they like Minecraft or Call of Duty or insert whatever game. Uh, I don't know how 
much value that metadata is that you play games. But I will tell you, you will probably be, or whoever is in your house playing games will probably be super aggravated if the game doesn't work. <laughs> so, or there's a lot of lag. Uh, but that's it for policy routing. I guess it's pretty straightforward. Uh, these are the rules you set. Um, have them set up as a gateway, add the tag for the kill switch, that's important, and follow that rule exactly for uh, making sure everything is checked on there, like the floating rule. So it's uh, make sure it's being processed first. This is where, like I said, people find little problems in there, but do match immediately. Match each interface you also don't want to go out. So if you have three internet providers, two internet providers, WAN 1, WAN 2, etc., you have to block each of them. If not, it'll go, hey, I'm being helpful again and sending you out the failover one, for example. Uh, but that's really it. It's it sounds complicated at first. Once you start doing it, it's not too complicated. And like I said, I'll leave a link below where you can just download the VPN config just to get the basics uh, set up. But please note it will um, goof things up if you have a VPN. It'll overwrite and put my VPN settings in there. But I did leave out my username and password. Uh, and always back things up. Actually, before you start messing with all the policy routing and everything uh, else, just do a backup. That way you can restore to that point because I've seen people accidentally delete things. And they don't know what they deleted. They changed too many settings. Have a point of before I started this adventure <laughs> uh, backup because when you restore and reboot PFSense um, after restore, it will put all the settings back to that working wonderful state it was before the adventure begun. And, but that's the fun part. You get to do it all over again until you get really good at it or you're like me and think this is, uh, you see the smile on my face. I get excited about VPN and policy routing. Um, I have fun doing it. So it's uh, not just a job for me. It's actually like why I don't play video games. This is my video game. All right. Thanks. Oh, uh, if you want to continue the discussion, head over to our forums uh, where you can carry on with this. Also, uh, if you would like to help out the channel, please visit our sponsors page. Um, and we have a lot of affiliate links of things that may uh, help you and do help out the channel. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.